This is my Xerox 2230iJ plotter, also known as the CAD Jet 2. And I love it, but I've had to change the belt so many times already that every time I do it, I've got to read the manual, and it's almost like learning it over again. So I'm going to make this YouTube video just for myself so I could follow along next time the belt breaks. Hopefully it will help you too. Step number one, according to the instructions, is to remove the left side plates and a screw back there that you've got to loosen to take off the plastic cover. Remove this cover plate that runs along the top by removing the three nuts from the back. Looking at the left side of the plotter, now you can easily get to three screws. One down there, one up here, and then one recess there. Those three screws hold on the plastic cover plate, remove the screws, and remove the plate. That screw is going to stay inside the plate. Plastic cover comes off. Now we're going to remove four screws to loosen the left side plate. One, two, three, and four. Left side plate comes off. This is the carriage cable. You're going to clip the tie strap holding it down to the PCB board. Don't cut the cable. Remove the tie strap. Unlock the cable from the connector, like all of these are done, by pulling the little tabs out and then peeling it away from the double-sided tape very carefully until the cable comes free. Get yourself some 3M double-sided sponge tape to replace that piece once you've got it removed. And this is the belt pulley tensioner. You're going to push it in with your left hand slide it forward so it unlatches from that little edge down there and then it's completely slack. You can pull the screw spring out and now you can work the pulley away from the belt. You can actually take this whole gizmo out and you have to to get it out of the way so you can move the carriage assembly down the rod and off the end of the rod. My belt is like burnt onto the pulley, so let me get that off, then we'll come back to the next step. Okay, got it loosened up, and I can now drop the pulley, yuck, away from the belt, and now take out the carriage. Set all that stuff aside. Right in front of all that is the plastic cam actuator. This is a very delicate piece of plastic, and you don't want to break it. I've had to replace it several times. It should not be put on that tight in the first place, so it should be easy to take off. When you put this back on, remember not to over-tighten that screw or you will crack the plastic. Put that baby aside once you've got it off. All right, here comes the money shot. We're ready to take the carriage assembly, slide it all the way down to the left side of the plotter, and take it right off the slide. But my old belt is all jammed and wedged in there. So we're going to have to get that all loosened up before the money shot. Okay, carefully move the ribbon cable to the side to get your old belt off the pulley. This is on the right side of the plotter. And once that's free and all those wires are free, you can move the carriage to the left side of the plotter. Golden, epic, it's free, here we go. Carrying the carriage assembly and its rat tail broken belt all the way to the left side. And we're supposed to be able to just whisk this baby right off, but we're still stuck. Careful that your bust up belt isn't jammed up with frayed wires flying around, possibly going to rip up your ribbon cable, or you will end up replacing that too. So let's get this belt completely out of the channel before we proceed any further. In this particular case, to the left side of the assembly, I've still got old belt jamming up in front so we're gonna have to fish that out of the way to make a clean shot straight off oh look at that here it comes straight off the bar pow okay now we're ready to change that belt out okay this is the bottom of the carriage assembly the belly of the beast and this is so but simple it's scary the belt is just 
clipped on to a tab on the back side of the carriage assembly. So we want to pull that clip up to remove the belt. So the instructions say to squeeze that clip together and that's because down toward the bottom of the clip it's got these little hook deals that fit inside the plastic and hold the clip down over the belt. So by squeeze, I, they don't mean your fingers because you can't get any squeeze on this. So I take my little pliers and gently press it in and then wiggle it up till it comes out. Okay, I'm only using one hand here. I can't do it while I film. Once you've wiggled that clip out of its little uh, locking, it does. It just slides right up. And you'll notice that the grooving of the belt actually fit into the back side of this plastic tab that it was the clip was holding it onto. Here's my new belt purchased on eBay for Cadjet 2 36 inch or Novajet um, or the Xerox 2230 or 2240 36 inch. I have no idea if this belt's going to work. This belt comes with a metal clip, but it was only $14, so it's worth a shot. Let's go. Now it's safe to assume, <clears throat> assume that this metal port portion is not going to wrap around the pulley or the servo motor spindle very smoothly. So we want to keep, we want to install this belt with this metal clip as close to the carriage as possible so it never goes around one of the pulleys or the servo motor. So I'm going to sort of dry fit this into place and see where the best location is for this metal clip. I put the carriage assembly back on the left side of the slider bar to see how far away that there's the plastic tab back there and at its furthest reach that plastic tab is almost two and a half inches away from where that pulley was when we uninstalled it. So it's safe to say that if that metal clip is on the right side of the carriage tab pulley puller thing then we'll be safe putting it there. Because I get disoriented when taking things apart, I'm going to take it out, flip it over. I want to be on this side of the pull tab. So we hold the belt in place as we grab our clip and slip the clip back over to hold it in there. Okay, I've got my little clip tabs seated in the plastic. Belt is in the grooves and I'm going to lock it in. Boom. That's it. Okay, we're ready to slip the belt back into the channel, put the carriage assembly back on the rod, and line everything back up. Hey, let's clean the rod before we do that, okay? The manual says to clean the bar with isopropyl, isoplup, yeah, that stuff. But the bar only. Do not get any alcohol in the brass bushings. Don't do it. OMG cat. That was just the first swipe on the bar. OMG cat even more. It's still dirty. Third pass. Getting cleaner. Okay, this is it because I'm out of alcohol swabs. Fourth pass. You don't need to clean underneath the bar because the bushings, as you, could, as you saw, have big gaps on the bottom. They don't actually touch the bar there. So... Top, back, front, three quarters, all you got to clean. The rest of that dirt's probably from my fingers. Let's do it. Okay, let's do some housekeeping while we're at it. Probably get my mini back and suck out all those pieces of rubber that flayed off of the old belt. Just so you don't mistake me for some kind of professional electronics repairman's know that I had to hook up my minivac to my Dirt Devil with blue tape. Just so you don't mistake me for an amateur electronics repairman, I'm now going to dust it all out with some real compressed air. Okay, everything's cleaned out. Let's stretch the belt out loosely across the whole assembly, get it tucked in nicely under the ribbon cable so we don't damage the ribbon cable or our belt, and then work our way back by putting the assembly back on the rod. Start on the left and lay the belt down inside the guide groove, the guard groove. 
you want to get it wrapped around the servo spindle first. Okay, the belt is pretty much laid in nicely. I've got plenty of slack to put it around the servo motor, so we're going to work it in there. Note that the little track pieces, you can't even see it now, it's so freaking blurry. The grooves that we locked into the carriage assembly itself go to the outside of the servo motor. It's the long grooves that go to the inside to match up the grooves you see on the servo spindle. When you're putting the carriage assembly back on, make sure on the back side that your that plastic leaf that runs down the length of it is going between the sensors on the back of it and you see it split down the middle. Mine was kind of bent so putting it on got jammed up but just work it in there and you'll get it all nice and straight so it sits in there firmly and slides nicely. Okay let's put the uh, tensioner arm back on. <laughs> I found my alcohol so let's clean off that roller that's so grody. This is probably why my last belt didn't last very long because I may not have cleaned this off in the first place. It's got like this oily gunk on there that probably penetrated and degraded the old the, the previous belt. Tisk tisk tisk. Okay, this is effed because this belt is too long. I mean look, there it is in the proper position on the servo spindle and here it is at the proper tension and I'm like two inches too far out there's no way I'm gonna hook that back in and get the spring back in place so you know not part of this video how to change the length of a belt you bought on eBay but because it's made of it's got a metal clip you saw remember that I think I can um, mod this puppy to shorten it to get it to fit I mean, what the hell? Let's go for it. Okay, hopefully you did better research than I did, or not as cheap as I am, and you got the right size belt. But if you didn't, and this part applies to you, I've calculated that I need to take back 46 notches to get to the right length. So I'm going to have to pry open the fold over on the clip on one side, Bring it back my 46, tighten it back up, and we should be back on. Hmm, this metal's a bitch to bend open, so I'm going to mark my 46, I'm going to cut it, I'm going to peel out the rubber, then I'll have a gap to get underneath the flute to slip it in and then recrimp it. Remember to start counting back from here inside the metal, because you're going to have to put your new, the recut piece all the way in for the grip. So for me, I'm starting my 46 from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yada yada. 4, 45, 46. Blue tape. Okay, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Fortune favors the bold. Whack. Okay, I had to figure out a way to separate the crimp and uh, without tearing my fingers up and figured out, well, just... Get your four dollar Home Depot mini nippers and carefully without cutting it use it to get in there and squeeze open that crimp. You can also use some small side cutters to start opening up the end and work your way in then you can switch over to the nippers and get in there for the full opening like the first side is ready to go. Check it out the trimmed end of the cable is going to slip right in I'll crush it closed and we'll be off to the races but hey, let's make sure it's not twisted and looped the wrong way before we commit, okay? Yeah, okay. The cable's all aligned. No loops. We're ready to crimp that baby. Here's the amount that I cut off. Gonna have to leave some constructive criticism for that eBay seller if this works out. It occurred to me to do a test fit before committing to crimping the clamp. And um, I'm a little on the snug side. Uh, that's what I wanted, but I've got some room to play with on the clip side. I can back it out two or three notches and still have a good secure bond and get back the proper tension. But it looks like we're back on track. There it is. Okay, the belt is installed. Got the right length pretty good. Spinning good. Let's put her back together and fire her up.
put the clap put the plastic cam back in use tape and recable the ribbon to the PCB board put the plate back on then put your cover back on put the back ribbon protector housing back on and your cover back on and should be ready to go before testing it make sure you actually unplug or disconnect power from the unit to clear the RAM so that it can reset its paper sizes and everything so we're going to test paper loading paper loads fine senses the size of the paper and is ready for printing here it is printing out my house plans just remember you can do your own repairs because anything another person can do you can do and never tell yourself I'm only human because there ain't nothing better you can be